Hi guys, this is Miss Toy, and today we are doing Lesson 18, the Inca Part 2. So I'm going to go ahead and read this passage. I've already highlighted a section in here, so I'll tell you guys where to highlight. Francisco Pizarro learned about the Inca and their great wealth on his second voyage to the New World. Pizarro was welcomed peacefully to the Incan kingdom by one of its governors. Just as Cortez had been welcomed by the Aztecs, and just as with the Aztecs, a smallpox epidemic reduce the population and weaken the army. The empire, the Inca emperor, Juana Capac, also died from the disease. Disputes about who would take over the country led to a civil war. A civil war is a war between citizens of the same nation. Now, civil war was um, bolded in this passage. I've already highlighted that sentence. The Incan empire was in turmoil, and Pizarro knew this was a perfect time to strike. Conquest of the Inca would be the goal of his third voyage. In 1527, Pizarro returned to South America and marched into Incan land. He made alliances with the enemies of the Inca, just as Cortes had done against the Aztecs. Pizarro's men massacred unarmed Incas and held their new king prisoner. The Inca revolted against Pizarro. They fought bravely, but their weapons were no match for the guns of the Spanish. The Inca were defeated. After Spanish takeover, the Inca suffered from disease and enslavement. Like the Aztecs, the Inca were forced to worship the way their Spanish conquerors worshipped. With the conquest of the Inca, the Spanish had firmly established their dominance in Western South America. So, for question one, in a civil war, citizens of a nation fight against, and that is, um, civil war was a word that we highlighted in that passage, so the answer to that would be each other. In a civil war, citizens of a nation fight against each other. So go ahead and circle that, um, each other. And for question two, which two words mean about the same? Dominance, enslavement, power, and alliances. So dominance means to have power over someone or something. So dominance and power would mean the same thing. So I circled those two answers. Question three. What weakened the Inca people so that Pizarro was able to conquer them? A, a smallpox epidemic, B, a civil war, C, having inferior weapons, or D, all of these. Now, remember in our first paragraph, um, it talks about that smallpox epidemic. So, it, it could be A, B, a civil war. Remember, we highlighted that um, the Inca were having a civil war against each other about um, who would lead and take over the country. So, it could be B. And C, having inferior weapons. In the very last sentence, um, it says... They fought bravely, but their weapons were no match for the guns of the Spanish. So, for three, our answer should be all of these. Four through five. Check the statements that are true about Cortez and Pizarro. So, they conquered native people of the New World. They slaughtered unarmed native people. They made three voyages to the New World. Or, they were welcomed peacefully by the natives. So it wants us to st um, check the statements that are true. So, um, they conquered native people of the New World. Cortez and Pizarro both um, conquered those people of the New World. So, we would make that a true statement. They slaughtered unarmed native, native people. Um, due to Cortez and Pizarro, they were one of the reasons why, um, you know, the Aztecs and the Incas both kind of declined in their populations. So, that statement is true as well. They made three voyages to the New World. Um, I do not remember um, mentioning that about Pizarro, so when we read it in our passage just now. So, that is probably not true. And they were welcomed peacefully by the natives. So, in the first sentence here of the Inca, Pizarro was welcomed peacefully. And it says, just as Cortez had been welcomed by the Aztecs. So, we know that that statement was true. They were welcomed peacefully, but it didn't end peacefully. So, question six. What does pre-Columbia mean? A, the native inhabitants of North and South America. B, a Spanish conqueror. C, the time before Christopher Columbus came to America. Or D, the European disease that killed many natives. So now you can look back in your help pages and see this definition of pre-Columbian in our help pages. 
which is civilizations that were established in the Americas before Christopher Columbus and other Europeans arrived. For example, the Maya, the Aztecs, and the Inca. So our answer for that question would be C, the time before Christopher Columbus came to America. And this is what your answer should be. Seven, a blank shares a common culture and language, a continent, a natural resource, a landform, or an ethnic group. Now back in lesson 17, we highlighted ethnic group and its meaning. Let me go ahead and read that meaning to you. An ethnic group is made up of people who share a common culture and language. So our answer for that question in lesson 18 is ethnic group. Eight. The blank was a trade route between Europe and China. Now we've already talked about this before and that is the Silk Road. That is the trade line between Europe and China. So we'll go ahead and circle that one. And then nine lists the countries that border the United States um, to the north. So if we go back to our world map here, um, not that world map, let me see in the help pages if I can find it. And this should be a common knowledge um, question. But if you go to the United States map, the political map, to our north, is Canada and to our south is Mexico so the country that borders the United States to the north is Canada and to the south is Mexico which type of map uses various colors to show elevation and landforms but may not include boundaries or capitals political physical both or neither now remember, a political map is what we just saw here, and it does show on um, borders and capitals. So as we see in each of the states, the capitals are located in there. This is a physical map, and I do know that it is very um, dark looking right here, but if it was a normal physical map, it would be colored to the elevation of everything. So our answer to 10 is a physical map. And this is what your lesson 18 should look like. And that is all. Thank you.